Hi everyone, Charles here from the Haiku Cyber Range. It's a pleasure to have you back in this three-part Metasploit video tutorial. For those who haven't seen the first part of the three-part series, feel free to check it out at haikurange.com. In the first part of the series, we've explained how to scan your environment with Metasploit and keep a database of the hosts, vulnerabilities, and services running in the environment you are cyber pen testing. We ran a simple scan that showed us what hosts are up and what ports are open on those hosts. We also found out that one of those hosts may be vulnerable to the dreaded Eternal Blue. In this video, we will go in-depth and talk about scanning to get more information and using the search feature to find and use auxiliary scanners from Metasploit. Let's go ahead and dive into Metasploit. Recall, in our first video, we ran a simple scan with no options. The output didn't tell us much of anything regarding the host. Lucky for us, Metasploit's DB MMAP scanner is NMAP. That means if you visited the MMAP tutorial at haikurange.com or know the MMAP syntax and options, you can utilize the options to scan the environment and get more information from the host. Attack A option for DB NMAP can get us much more information, but could take a long time to run. We'll go ahead and kick off the scan and pause the video until the scan completes. Once the scan completes, we will then go and look at our host services and vulnerabilities list to see if more information was populated from the scan. We'll go ahead and maximize the screen here so we can see the output more clear. Now that the scan has completed, we can run a host command to see what we found. Notice after this scan, we know the OS and the purpose of the host. We see that the OS on several machines are 2008 or 2012. Running a services command will show us more services that are running. It'll show the port number, the protocol, the service, and also some service versions. The, the service version can guide us in the right direction later on when we want to find exploit for outdated versions and vulnerable services. Now let's run the vulns command to see if we find anything else interesting. Nothing new to report. We still see the eternal blue vulnerability on the host with the IP address 1098.10.241. We sure got more details from the MMAP scan with attack A option. Metasploit also have auxiliary modules that can help you perform scanning, sniffing, and fuzzing. So we'll dive into that. Since we saw the SSH and FTP service running, we can see if there's an auxiliary scanner to run against FTP and SSH. We'll go ahead and click the we'll go ahead and type search F, or SSH and see what we find. To use a scanner, all you have to do is type in use and then the file path that they're in. For example, let's do this search um, SSH enum users. So we'll do, let's go ahead and use the SSH enum user scanner so we can find SSH users. Simply type user use auxiliary scanner SSH SSH underscore enum user. From here, you type options to see what commands you can fill in. Anything marked yes under required means you'll need to fill out the variable before running the scan. So it looks like we have yes on our hosts, our port, threads, and threshold. We found the SSH service running on two servers, .240 and .241. So we'll go ahead and set the R host to dot two forty and dot two forty one. For username, we'll put a common username to see if that's a valid SSH user. We'll try something like admin or administrator first. Once we have that set, we'll type in options to verify the variables, and then we'll run the scan. So here, after, after typing options, we see that we set the username as administrator, 
our host as 1098, 10, 240, and 241. And so we'll see if there's a user administrator for SSH credentials. And it doesn't look like that's set. So let's try another username. We'll go ahead and set the username to admin. And then verify our variables. And then run the scan. Bingo. From here, you can see that the admin user for SSH is found. We can simply do the scan for FTP users as well. We'll change our auxiliary scanner to the FTP login scanner to see what we can find. We'll do a search FTP. Then we will use the FTP login module. Type in our options to see what variables we have to set. We'll change the R host to dot two forty and dot two forty one. We'll also set the username to admin. This time, we'll use something else for the password. Metasploit has a built-in password list for known passwords. We'll try to configure our scanner to look at that password list and try to brute force our way into the FTP server. We will set the pass file to where the password list is found in the Metasploit database. And then we'll type options to verify the variables. And then we'll run. Looks like we found a credential. On the IP address 1098.10.241, on the FTP port 21, the username is admin, and we have a password of password123. Since we are connected to the Metasploit database, we now have the credential saved. If you type creds to view the credentials, it'll show what we've gathered. Here it shows 1098.10.240 and 241 have SSH username as admin, but 1098.10.241 uh, port 21 FTP, you've got a username of admin and the password, password123. Well, that's all for this video tutorial. Stay tuned for part 3 for our Metasploit videos. To read the latest about the Haiku Cyber Range or see new features, tips, and tricks, visit us at haikurange.com.